it's a pleasure to have you this week here on the link once again. Remember here is we give you information you can use. But also, it's a place of opportunities like this week. We are speaking about the UNICEF Innovation Fund Challenge. So there's innovation, there is funding, but it's a challenge. So if you want to participate, pay attention. And my guest tonight is uh, Mr. Richard Zulu, who is the founder of Outbox. Outbox, he is going to tell us a, a bit about it, but they work with UNICEF in this initiative. Richard, welcome. Thank you very much, Samuel. I'm glad to be here. With Happy you. to see you again after a long time. I know, I know. <laughs> We've spent quite a long time I trying know. to support young people. Very good, and thank you for hanging there. Tell us about the UNICEF Innovation Fund Challenge. Yeah. So, <clears throat> and I think to tell you about the Innovation Fund Challenge, it's important to know what UNICEF does yeah. and, and, and how we kind of collaborate with them on that. Mm. So this is an initiative we launched um, last year in 2020. Mm. Um, as you know, UNICEF is all about helping disadvantaged children yeah. and, and adolescents, mm. um, largely in areas of access to education, mm. um, you know, ensuring that they, they grow um, and have very nice childhoods. Yeah. But as you know, the, the approach usually to addressing many of these pressing challenges that mm. are faced by our children and adolescents um, has been through a very NGO approach yeah. uh, that's very grant driven mm. uh, in terms of uh, trying to see that they have good access to education, mm. maternal health and protection against violence. Okay. So now UNICEF sat down and said, how might we take a private sector-led approach. Mm. A private sector-led approach is where you look for entrepreneurs okay. in the private sector who are passionate mm. about solving these problems but in a sustainable mm. approach. What do we mean? It means that uh, you're running a business yeah. that, for instance, helps uh, a child have access to good primary pre-primary education, All right. but your beneficiaries are able to pay for it mm. or pay for it as a service or someone subsidizes that, that okay. cost. So the UNICEF Uganda Innovation Fund Challenge is looking for, for entrepreneurs out there, mm. either as individuals okay. who have ideas, either they have existing businesses, mm. which we call social businesses. We use the word social businesses. Enterprise. Because, yes, you mm. lead with impact and then profit. Okay. Uh, or even uh, NGOs out there mm. that uh, have interventions that take uh, a sustainable approach in terms of how they address challenges mm. faced by children and adolescents. All right. So once you have this and, and, and you apply it to the challenge, you then have an opportunity to receive some funding, mm. uh, to receive some technical assistance, okay. uh, to grow, test, pilot, or scale up uh, the intervention that you have mm. depending on where at what stage you are okay very interesting where you, you see these people in in the technology and where you are have hijacked the word innovation so when people think innovating under for children and adolescents thinking eh, what does that is it an app or what give me an example for instance what kind of innovations might you be looking for yeah it's it's good you mention that because we have the word innovation mm. being thrown around, and sometimes it's confused with creativity. Yeah. You have an idea, mm. you're creative. Mm. Good, you have an idea. Mm. What makes it an innovation is when your beneficiary or customer actually pays for it. Okay, it's viable. Mm. Okay, now when you think of children and adolescents, they are faced with many challenges. Mm. Hmm? Mm. For instance, look at the first years of childhood yeah. before you make five years mm. aspects of the type of education you have very critical very, very critical yeah. in terms of building your numeracy and literacy mm. skills mm. and very many young people face challenges there mm. i know you've seen many of our young people learning under trees in what they call early childhood centers yeah. carrying small bags going into different homes and mm. being taught you know there are challenges in that area. And that lives with you if it's not fixed. Yes, mm. of course. Yeah. Because then when you grow, you have challenges, mm. numerous and literacy challenges. Okay. Right? So imagine if you look at such a problem. Mm. The other day, 
you know, I, I was in Yumbe, yeah. and you find those people studying under trees. Communities mm -hmm. try to work together to bring together these young chil the children, mm -hmm. and they sit in a tree. They have no furniture, for yeah. instance. Yeah. They're struggling. Class sizes are so big. Mm -hmm. Now, there is an innovation, for instance, that we've supported okay. called Sit Park. Okay. Okay. Now, what Sit Park does, they've come up with an innovative idea mm -hmm. where they, they make school bags. Okay. out of local materials mm. but actually that school bag turns into a chair hey. Hey. when you get when you get to your mango tree or your classroom where you're undertaking your early childhood education you unfold you unfold <laughs> you sit <laughs> on it and I, wish, I wish you had a picture but yeah <laughs> i get it <laughs> you you even have a flat surface now a child there mm. has an opportunity to have where to sit and a surface to use for writing mm. when they're in the classroom. So they are, they are addressing the challenge of affordable furniture or educate, uh, sorry, affordable furniture for pre-primary going children mm. within the country. Now, how, who pays? Who pays? They good have question. A, yeah. They have an interesting model. Mm. They make some very good furniture, sorry, packs mm. that they sell to the European market okay. and that cost subsidizes what they sell to the, to the local income communities. Mm. So that's an idea, for instance, of an, of an innovation, okay. but a sustainable business that is actually addressing challenges mm. in the pre-primary education mm -hmm. side of things. So you have to really appreciate the problems mm. for you to think different. Oh, very good. So, uh, and you said innovation. Innovation in kind or innovation on paper? Can I, when can I come to you? Must I have designs? Can't I have written down and um, I'm just there? Mm. When do I come to you? So you can come to us when you're at two stages. Mm. You, you might have an idea mm. based on your experience yeah. in whatever sector. It could be in maternal health. Mm. It could be, you know, addressing children's rights and things like that. And the examples I gave you yeah. in education and mm. whatnot. Um, and you have an idea you come to us what we really look out for at that stage mm. is the evidence and your understanding of the problem mm. and whether what you're proposing will address the problem mm. and whether the team you are coming with yeah. is actually solid enough and experienced enough mm. to address that problem okay. so this means in this case we bet on you mm. okay the second way you can come to us is when you're already existing okay you have a product or service and you feel, one, I either want to tailor it for the disadvantaged uh, children mm. or adolescents, mm. or you have a proof of concept, you have evidence, and you want to grow it. Okay. Okay? Scale. Mm. Scale it. Mm. There, the questions are, of course, more around your learnings and uh, how best we see that you are fit mm. for what we're trying to do for our young children okay. and adolescents. So All right. In those, er in those aspects, you have an opportunity. So don't feel bad mm. if you have an idea or if you have a, a solution. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just, we, we, uh, I see time is, ru is running short. I have a good, a, a inexpensive shoe design for rural kids. Is that something like that? Does that work? <laughs> is that an innovation, in fact? I'm just giving an example of somebody here. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, it depends now. You see, innovation is all around thinking different. Mm. What is wrong with the other shoes? And you're out, called out box, think <laughs> out of the box. <laughs> yes. mm. The question is, what's wrong with the other shoes? Yeah. Why aren't they being bought? Why mm. aren't they being used? Mm. Why will yours be the one Stand out. that parents will get for the children? Mm. That's the key question mm. to answer mm. as to whether that is an innovation. We don't want you to just do the status quo. Oh, I've seen this MGO doing this, let me apply Let me transfer. That. What is not working? Mm. That's the key, key question, because we shall ask why should we invest in you? Good question. Um, how do I participate? I've had Zulu speak and I'm like, mm -hmm. how do I participate? So participation is uh, quite simple. Yeah. It's online, okay. you know, due to COVID. We mm. now want to make things accessible. Mm. So if you visit uh, the website www.unicef.innovationchallenge.ug okay. Innovation Challenge, one word. One word. Okay. Innovationchallenge.ug. Okay. 
you have an opportunity to go and apply. Mm. You just visit the website, read the terms and conditions, okay. what we're looking for, then you express interest. Now, mm. when you express interest, we shall invite you to what we call an information session, okay. where you'll have an opportunity to also learn more, mm. ask questions where you, s you need clarity. Okay. And then if, if you make it, we then have what we call uh, a boot camp, a pre-selection mm, boot mm, camp. Mm. We put you in front of experts, they give you feedback on your idea, you improve it, and then you have a final pitch day where you get selected. Okay. Yeah, we are looking for four innovations. Wow, those are, that's quite competitive. It's quite competitive. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite competitive. All right. Um, so what happens finally, okay, get selected. How do I work? You said innovation, uh, social enterprise. Let me say I had an idea and you find me, it was a good one, you find me throughout. Mm. What do we do? How do I make the money and yet serve the, you know, the purpose of UNICEF? So <coughs> when you're successful, you get an opportunity to get up to $20,000. Okay. You can convert to Uganda shillings. About 80, 80 million. Yes, mm. about 80 million. Yeah. Now, this money, we sit together with you mm. and see what are the gaps, what are the things we need to help you with. You see, the, the, the program can't solve all your problems. No. So we have to prioritize mm. what's the best use of the funding, mm. what's the best use of the UNICEF network, mm. what's the best use of the outbox expertise. So you have an opportunity to learn okay. some of the things you didn't learn. Mm. We, you have an opportunity, we link you up to experts be they accounting experts, mm. child health, childhood experts, depending on your needs. Okay. And then you're with us for a period of six months. Mm. At the end of the six months, our measure of success is whether we were able to meet the milestones we agreed on okay. to help you move from this level to that level in terms of addressing some of your gaps. Okay. It could be you want market access mm. to districts outside Kampala and maybe aligning how you think about impact. Right? It could be you want us to help you build your product or proof of concept. Mm. Mm? Then we help you, okay? We help you think about it and find the expert. So, uh, but it doesn't end with the six months. This is a three-year initiative. Yeah. So we, we st still stay in touch with you okay. in terms of helping you. So you've had the man. If you have ideas and you qualify, they won't babysit you. But they will work with you. That means you've got to be driven and you've got to be... He hasn't said it, but I think passionate uh, to help uh, children who are disadvantaged and adolescents. Uh, this is a place of opportunities, and I hope you are going to take action. Uh, the website is www.unicef.innovationchallenge.ug. I hope you got that. That was the link. Thank you for joining us tonight.